Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to talk about discus a little bit. Specifically, new discus, mixing discus, quarantining discus, and all the things you should do, and the more astute of you might notice I haven't done. So I thought this would be a timely video as I have my original discus in this tank, which I've had for a long time, many, many years. And in the tank next to them, I have some new discus from a completely different supplier. This would be a cause of concern to most experienced discus keepers purely because I've kept them in tanks right next to each other. So the thing that we're worrying about here is biological security. And the reason we're worrying is because a thing by many names sometimes called the discus plague, sometimes called cross-contamination, sometimes called uh, the Asian German wild thing. It's, it's a fear that some bacteria or pathogen in one group of fish which have developed a tolerance to that, passes to another group of fish which don't have that tolerance and end up getting very sick and potentially dying from it. So we want to avoid that at all costs. The easiest way to avoid that is don't mix fish. So if, if at all you can get from one good supplier your entire supply of fish, that's the best thing. Buy them all at once, you don't have to worry about this. Buy them over a period of time, very little to worry about. Chopping and changing suppliers, chopping and changing different types of... I mean, it doesn't have to be just Asian or German fish or Asian and wild fish. Even different fish from different suppliers that are the same Asian fish, you have that worry. So that whether that's worth it to you, uh, you really have to make that decision. Uh, whether it's worth the quarantining procedure or the risk of illness or damage to your fish. But if you want to keep different fish, then you have to go through this. But sometimes that is forced upon us when we can't get fish from a certain supplier or we have to swap suppliers or change and move things around. So in those cases, what is the best thing to do about it? I'm going to talk you through what I think you should do rather than what I have done because I've failed at the first hurdle here by keeping these fish right next to each other. You'll have seen from my live stream, I've accidentally used the same nets, I've used the same hoses. What you want to do is keep your two different types of fish completely separate. If you can keep them in different rooms, Perfect. If you can't keep them in different rooms, keep them in tanks on the opposite side of the rooms. I should really have kept them in a tank or way over on the other side of this fish room. Use dedicated equipment for each type of fish. So this lot get one set of hoses, one set of nets, one set of tongs, whatever it is that equipment that I use on this tank, this tank gets a completely different set and ideally as far away as possible. You'll read a lot about this on the internet and medication is talked about quite frequently. I'm not an advocate of medicating fish before you know what you're medicating for. You will read a lot about that on the internet. Um, what I like to do, or what I try to do, is break it into really two distinct time periods. So what we have is your new fish, you unbox them, whatever your unboxing procedure. I prefer the, the plop and drop method, but there are, there are others. Get your new fish into the tank that they're going to live in. Uh, as quickly as possible, and then it's a case of monitoring. The longer you can do that, the better. I would recommend a minimum of two weeks because that gives your fish a little bit of time to settle because it's quite stressful moving around because you want to observe their normal behavior as much as possible. You want to see them eating regularly. You want to see them eating well. You want to see them poop. You want to see that that poop is good and sturdy. Mmm, delicious. You want to make sure that there's no signs of illness, uh, ongoing signs of stress. So you want to see that they're bright, they're active, they're coming up for they're coming up for food, they're not hiding away, they're not dark, they're not clamped fins. So you know you've got a healthy fish and that any problems that you see later on aren't because the fish is just ill, just that it's suffered some kind of um, disease or illness during the tra traveling and getting to your tank. So phase one, assess your fish, make sure that they are happy. Phase two um, gets a little bit mean, <laughs> for want of a better term. Uh, it's called the sacrificial lamp, lamp? No, it's not. It's called the sacrificial lamb technique, where what we're going to end up doing is taking one fish from this tank, one fish from this tank, and putting them together in a completely separate tank, thereby introducing the two types of fish to each other and any pathogens, any bacteria, any illnesses that either of them are harboring but aren't hurting itself can be shared. The idea of taking just one from each tank is that you're limiting the damage. So this is a risk management strategy. It's making sure that you're not going to wipe out an entire tank of fish by doing this. So we're going to pick 
a fish. It's slightly easier with the new fish, you can just kind of go, uh, yep, yeah, you look healthy, we'll pick you. After you've had your fish for a while, you get kind of attached to them and you, you don't want to pick one, potentially putting it at risk. Um, in this scenario, because I have been so sloppy with my bacterial um, security, or biological security, I have dipped water, shared water, the things have been moving between them and I've had them for a number of weeks now. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine or I would have seen a problem straight away. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pick one fish from this tank. Sorry, let me scare you. One fish from this tank and I'm going to put them in the tank over there. So this is where I do too little too late and I have a tank set up at the farthest edge of my fish room as far away from the rest of the disc as possible. I want a clean, empty, bare bottom tank I want that because if I do have to introduce any medication, I don't want sand that's going to get potentially stained or I don't want uh, foliage that I'm end up going to kill. I just want a nice, clean, sterile environment. And when it comes to timing for this tank, while I would advocate waiting as long as possible in completely separate tanks to make sure the fish are definitely healthy, in here, all the problems that, in my experience, have ever been faced show up in the first 24, 48, maybe maybe 72 hours at the outside but they generally within the first couple of days if there's going to be a problem you'll see that problem and um, so I would keep them in here for maybe a week if that again take my advice with a pinch of salt I'm not an expert and um, other people will advocate lots of other things other people will advocate adding lots of medications at this point but again I've, I really stress the make sure you know what you're treating before you just start randomly treating things. So in a move that's very much shutting the door after the horse is bolted, I have two separate nets which have been sterilized. I'm gonna use one net for each tank. Again, hammering home that if you're gonna do this properly, you really need to be tight on your biosecurity. Uh, but we're gonna get a fish from each tank out, put them into that tank. I know it's the same water, it's the same temperature, so there shouldn't be any problems with that. It's just a case of getting them over there and getting them in. So who's for the chop? I think we're going to go with this guy down here. So a nice healthy specimen, come on. I've been watching recently, he has been eating really well. Um, no hiding, no problems, never had this fish looking bad, nice and healthy, a good, good strong fish. Get them over into the new tank. And again, just as fast as possible, get them in there. Let them chill out there and get the other one in. So I always find whenever you, I always find whenever you move discus at all, there's a little bit of bedding in. They don't like to be moved. Not that I'm saying they're a particularly pathetic fish or anything like that, but they can be a little bit. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I'm at risk of offending someone. Uh, let me know in the comments what word I'm thinking of. Be nice. Okay, so now we start the clock ticking. We are going to monitor these fish. What we're looking out for is, I mean, this is a classic example of clamped fins. I'm pretty sure that's just because we've literally moved them in the last 30 seconds. They are getting used to the surroundings. For filming purposes, I've left the lights on. I should really have had the lights off. So we're gonna give them a few hours just to make sure everything's fine. Let them get a little bit settled uh, and come back and check them in the morning. What I'm looking out for is them to get dark, them to start trying to hide away, them clamping fins like this even more. Basically anything that's not usual for behavior from observing them in the other tanks. When that does happen, my general approach is salt and acroflavin. That has, in my experience, but limited experience, granted, in my experience has always solved any of those problems uh, and we know what we've got to deal with, but generally my fingers are crossed that we're not going to have any of those issues at all and that after a few days of monitoring this we'll be good to go so 24 hours later these guys obviously still fine let's have a look at the other ones we've moved 
So there you go. To me, they look absolutely fine. Seen some nice bright colours. There's no hiding. There's no clamping. And swimming about all right. Um, the bigger one did just crash into the side when you saw me approaching, so that's not great. But yeah, everything looking good. I'll try giving them a little bit of food, see if they go for that. Again, quite common for them not to eat after moving. There you go, a little one at least is going for it. And we're very much in the monitor stage here. We're just going to keep looking after them for the next, probably at least another day. Like I say, any time I've experienced this before, it's usually happened in the first 24 hours, if not 48. I have heard reports of it being a little bit longer. But as I say, all signs look good to me. And here we are, another 24 hours later. As you can see, still both bright, proud, doing a bit of a water change. So I've done a water change today. Um, we had some nice big poops on the floor that all looked nice and healthy. It's amazing how much time you spend looking at poops as a fish keeper. But uh, anyway, there you go. But yeah. Looking pretty happy, so we're two days in, two and a bit days really. I'll probably leave them here for another couple of days just to make sure that I'm now pretty much satisfied that everything is going to be well and is well. There you go, that's an example of what I would recommend doing. It's what I should do myself. Obviously I screwed up myself in the beginning with my poor biosecurity, but that's a fairly standard quarantine process for your discus. As I said earlier, I'm not an advocate for throwing in loads of meds all the time. It's down to you. It's up to you whether you want to go down that route. I'm not saying it's a bad idea to have meds on standby. Certainly things like salt, nacroflavin, and things of that ilk. But a lot of the things you'll read on the internet are like, oh, throw in Prazi, throw in Metro, throw in this. A lot of these are controlled things that you can only get from vets, certainly here in the UK anyway. And it's just, it's a sledgehammer to crack a nut. So. Choose your stock wisely, follow your um, specialist or your breeder or wherever you get them from, as long as you're not getting them from your local pet shop down the road. Um, but even then, they might have good advice. But if you're going to a discus specialist, um, follow their advice, ask them the questions, make sure that you've got someone on hand that you can go back and ask them those sort of questions. Join the Aquarium Adventures Discord server or Facebook group, you can ask us these questions on there. But I hope that was some use to you. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm getting these guys together in the big display tank. So I've been pretty much a year without my big discus display tank. Uh, waiting for some house renovations, floor fitting, all that kind of stuff. It's all done, ready to go. So the next couple of videos we'll be fixing up that tank, getting it back up and running and then getting these guys in it. Hopefully very successfully. And um, So if you fancy seeing any of that stuff, please Click that subscribe button down below, there will be lots more videos in the future on this sort of thing, the discus and getting the display tank back up again. Um, so really excited about that, hope you are too, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!